Hey, what's going on LinkedIn, YouTube? Uh, Liam Reddy here. We're going to do another thought leadership video around ChatGPT. Going to do something a little bit ambitious. I'm not sure if we're going to be able to get away with it, uh, but we're going to try to code a solution that populates a quote using custom code in Zapier uh, and have that quote obviously generated in HubSpot based on some requirements that we set. Um, I've gone through this process before. It took me many hours to figure out uh, which ChatGPT, but hopefully through the lessons learned and that trial and error, we can get through this relatively quickly. Not too confident in that, but we're going to see because basically starting from scratch here in a sandbox. So uh, to, to begin, we're going to go to the settings. This is probably going to be a long video. So uh, we're going to create a private app. So private apps in HubSpot are basically replacing API keys. So if you're familiar with API keys, those are no longer available in HubSpot. Now you set up everything using a private app. Private app basically allows you to uh, set up scopes. So scopes are determining the access that you'll have via API to your HubSpot instance and all the data that's stored in it. So there's a lot that you can give access to but we're going to be primarily focused on CRM. So we're going to go ahead and give just all the general read and write. You could create just like a, this one I call it quote demo, but whatever you name it, you could, you could either group it together and just give like general access, or you can have a different private app for every like project that you have spun up, which is probably best practice. This is the, going to be the important one quotes. Um, we're going to give it companies, contacts, doesn't need custom, custom objects, but it definitely needs deals. It definitely needs, uh, not for this, I'm not sure it needs any of this. This is all schema. Okay. Yeah. So you stop it up the objects. So that's object access. And then inside of, is it settings? There's one other thing. We got to this e-commerce. So e-commerce e is important for like quotes and stuff. So you want to toggle e-commerce on, and then we can create our app. What that's going to do is when you create that app, it's going to give you a token. So this is your access token, and this is a basically a bear token that allows you to access that API. So anytime you're making an API call, you can use that token supposed to be called a secret and you can use that to basically access the data. Reason why you don't want to share that with anybody is because then they can access your HubSpot API to either query your data, to read it or to write to it, um, which obviously that's not good. So you want to keep this one definitely protected. And that's one of the things that we're going to talk about with Zap, uh, Zapier. One of the things they don't necessarily do, do well, but maybe somebody else in the community can educate me on a better way to handle it. Um, so we set up our API, we have our code, and now we're going to go to the HubSpot API documents. So I'm going to look for custom quote templates. That's not what I was looking for. Okay, so we have our endpoint here. So endpoints are the other important piece in that equation. You need both the endpoint and the secret. So like in this example, I'm going to use this endpoint just to get a list. And that's actually not what I was looking for. I don't need the quote. I need the quote template.
It might be under this documentation now. Ah, oh, here it is. And that's one of the things, okay, yeah. Uh, okay, so you can find the quote template, here it is. By making a call to this endpoint. And then we also need to add, that's just after the slash CRM. So you'd also wanna add this here to the beginning. So the next thing we're going to do is I can't remember exactly how I did this, so we're going to go to the private app. going to do it. Nope. All right. All right, here it is. No. Ah, here it is. Think do bear token. Okay, so now we've got our quote, our quote templates. We don't want to do any of the default. Uh, I guess that's all we have access to. So we would pull, I would pull default. And then this is what I need right here. I'm going to grab that and put that uh, right here. I'm cheating a little bit because I had some of the code already. So I'm just like going to use that to give it to ChatGPT. So hopefully we can cut through some of the errors that I was seeing. All right. So now that we have that and you kind of get a, got a little bit of a preview into Postman. You can use those different API endpoints to fetch data to see how it's structured in HubSpot, which then like a lot of the times the documentation might not cover everything that you need. So for example, you could create a quote in your HubSpot instance manually, and then you can make a call to your HubSpot quote to pull all of the quotes um, and display them. And then you can see how the data is structured, which then gives you insights into like how you actually need to set up your workflow um, and the custom coded action. So I use Postman a lot, that's very helpful. And I think that that's a great tip for anybody who's like new to, um, to APIs. Oh. We are inside of Zapier. We're gonna go find HubSpot and then code Zapier. We're just gonna make it and we'll customize it from there. So the, I'm gonna make the trigger in HubSpot It is updated. Deal pipeline, sales pipeline, deal stage is qualified to buy. We don't need to test that trigger yet. Next thing that we're going to do is a date time. I had to learn this one the hard way too. Uh, when you're creating a quote, there's a very particular way that you need to format the There's a very particular way that you need to format the um, the date. So I was just using the close date, um, and then that basically takes that date and then manipulates it, and then it inputs it into the quote for a uh, expiration date. 
So in this example, we have it set to 930. I'm actually going to move this to qualified to buy so that we can test this trigger. Test the trigger. So I found the deal. And we'll have the close day. So we can continue with that record and then we can transform the formatting of Close date. Now it's kind of formatted similarly, so I'm not exactly sure. When I try to do it with my tests, uh, it made me format it and it looks very similar to the way. So it's. So maybe it's different. I'm not exactly sure. Uh, but it kept rejecting it every time I was trying. So I had to use that as a workaround. We can test the step and we'll see if the output is different. So this is the output they gave us. Obviously it's different than the one that was provided. Um, so now we get to the code, right? We need to do JavaScript code. All right, here comes QChat GPT code interpreter. We're going to do hello, chat GPT. All right, so I have notes over here. I'm looking at them just to make sure. Um, okay. I'm building a custom code Xavier action. Uh, that will create a quote in HubSpot. It needs to make a call to this API endpoint using this bear token. Now this is not recommended, um, but that's one of the things uh, about this API is that, or inside of Zapier, there's no way to use a secret Right, so um, I'm just doing this and I'm inputting it into ChatGPT because I don't care. Like it's it's just a sandbox environment, but I do not recommend putting your bear token into ChatGPT. And if you do, immediately rotate it as soon as you're done testing. So before it goes live, like it's fine. I guess if you're going through the testing process to just do that, but before it goes live, make sure you rotate your token and you update it in all the different places. Um, and if anybody has a recommendation for how to input a secret, I've done it as put the secret here and then use um, some kind of data input in the actual code itself. Uh, and then I've actually just like hard coded it into the code, which is what it's gonna do when I give it to it. Um, I really need to copy and paste this bear token. So private apps, shouldn't need it again after this. And I also need to go get endpoint would be create a quote. This workflow needs to um, populate the following properties and associations when creating. I'm cheating here. So I'm giving it the exact formatting that it gave me before it worked. And let's see what it does. I'm 
important that it goes into draft mode. That's another thing that I found out. If you don't, um, you know, give it a HubSpot status of draft, you actually can't even click it to open it, which is interesting. All right. Let's see if it even has Axios in there. I think it does. We're going to input this here and then let's see what inputs we need to give it. Cause I know I gave it a bunch of inputs last time. All right. So we need deal name. You need Deal name. We have the expiration date. And that actually would not be the close date anymore because the formatting is incorrect. It would be this output. We need uh, owner email. And I don't think I, but I did the stuff that fetches that. So I need to add that. And then it makes the association. That's correct. Okay. So we need before this step to do a HubSpot action. Get a deal. I guess you could probably actually do that at the top, uh, but I didn't do it. So I'm just going to add it here. Uh, we'll do deal ID up top. And we are getting the in the owner email. So it's also, this is, I have a workflow that's built um, that basically looks at who the deal owner is and then populates a property called owner email that allows you to input that uh, so that it makes the association to the user. All right, sorry, not to the user, to the deal owner. Quote creation. I need to populate this really quick. I'm just going to do it manually. Don't email me, you guys. Actually, if you've made it this far in the video and you're still watching, email me because <laughs> uh, you're my people. So we just added that and now we can retest the step. Should fetch the email now. Yep, and there it is. So just a cool display of like how you can use that get function if you needed to. And there's your owner email. So now we have all the, in theory, all the pieces that we should need in order to test a step. Yeah, it doesn't have Axios. So one of the cool, I guess you can't do it until it's live. You can uh, use the AI. But like a lot of the times, instead of just doing this this testing, I'll actually turn it on and then I'll force the record to go down so that I can actually look at what happened. But here was the error log. Yeah, and this is trial and error. So I 
talk to a lot of people who are doing this. We're all doing the same thing. Like you give it the error and then it's smart enough to adjust the code. So you don't have to worry about that. So now it's going to try to attempt to do it using fetch. Again, I, I remember when it said Axios, I was like, I don't think it supports that. So I definitely went through this process before, but starting from scratch. And another time it'll also give you the hello world error. You got that in the last thought leadership video and it probably will happen after I do this. But we are going to go back in. Now we can test the step again. I'm pretty sure that's the hello world response. But... So it needs an output, right? It needs some kind of an output and that's the error that it's giving there. Right, let's see what it does now. Error Z is not defined. All right, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna skip the test, skip the test. We're going to publish this and I'm going to show you like how I usually do it. So now we're going to know that I'm about to force this to go down this workflow and it's going to break because there's going to be an error. And I'm actually, before we do that, going to edit this draft and then before it did that weird Z thing, cause I've never seen it do that before. I'm going to copy this fetch code. And then I'm going to input this back in. Come on. And we're going to publish. And now we're going to move this back to appointment scheduled. We'll save it. Ah, I forgot. You don't need to save that. And then move back to qualified to buy. And then when you push it back through qualified to buy, now we'll be able to see this, the history where the zap runs. We're getting up to 25 minutes. So I'm going to pause this until it goes through. All right. So here's the error. Got all the way down to the custom code. God damn it. It's still the, uh, well, let's see what this says. So this is the AI that I was talking about that helps you troubleshoot. And I figured that that was going to be a problem. Uh, all right, so let's publish that and then let's reforce this down. So we're going to put it back through the workflow. But you can see how this is trial and error, right? It's like 
it gives you some idea of how to do it and then it doesn't understand some limitation of the environment that you're building it in such as zapier and then um i'm never going to say that word right <laughs> and then it'll um as you get feedback and errors like you can provide the logs to it and then it'll make adjustments and then it'll learn about the environment and then it'll make future improvements based on that as long as you're in the same chat obviously i cleared my chat All right, again, I'm going to pause it while we wait. All right, so now we have our second error. Hopefully this will. All right, so saying you need to use a callback. So let's say I reverted back to the version JavaScript sample using fetch and the code because it couldn't handle the Z logic. Um, here's the error. Zap AI gave. All right, we're going to give it a try. Give it a try. Okay. Go back in here. Edit our zap. I hate Ah, uh, come on. Okay. All right, Zap here. Make this product improvement. It's either I'm not good at this or something's wrong with the way you click and drag. Okay, uh, so we'll paste the code. Continue, publish, publish. All right, let's see what happens. Appointment schedule. X qualified to buy and pausing you again while we wait for that to go through. All right, we got another error expected. Yep, I knew it. Here goes the hello world. Every damn time. All right, let's see. All right. New air log See, I also hate when it does this because like, I don't want to go figure out where to put this in the code. So I'm going to say that's a waste of a prompt. I'm going to say work smarter, not harder. So wait for it to generate the full code. 
and I'll tell it. I'm like, please, every time you give me the code, give it the whole code to me. Obviously, it doesn't listen. Definitely doesn't like it. It can recall its own inputs and stuff that in like kind of context that you've talked about, but it doesn't remember rules from like prompt to prompt. And like most of the time, I, like I'll read the code and double check, but honestly, I just kind of have to like let it run again. So I'll just put it back through the workflow sometimes. And like, I'll look to make sure it made an adjustment, but I don't necessarily like critique it and think like, well, did it, did, did it do that right? Or do I need to like adjust it? Because I trust uh, ChatGPT's input over mine when it comes to code. And here is where we pause. See you in a second. All right, so we're, we're aired again. So it's just continuing to tell me the same thing. Um, and this is an issue with, uh, it can't, like, I don't know why it can't understand this, but um, I got the same error response. Um, make sure. Funny thing is you don't even need to like correct your grammar. It'll just understand. Usually when I tell it, it needs an explicit value that fixes it for some reason. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is the code that corrects it. Learn my lesson. Just gonna do it section by section. You guys are like, dude, this video is already 30 minutes, 35 minutes long. Come on. So I'm trying. All right. Can you? Publish, publish. And then here's the part where we pause. Find a schedule. Qualified to buy. All right, aired out again. Trend, common theme here, right? You, you really can't get through this process without trial and error. So like, if you're going through your process and you're like, hey, I feel like I'm just failing my way through it, then you're doing it correctly. Let's see. Okay, I don't know why it's like this, this little piece of it, it takes a while for it to work through.
All right. Don't let me down. Edit that. Action. Come on. And please, if you like, dude, you're like missing something and like uh, there's a better way to go about doing this, please. So part of the cool thing about this and like why I'm doing more thought leadership around this and not, you know, I could have just said, here's the code that like works and like giving it to the community, but it's kind of the principle of like teach person to fish, they can fish for the rest of their life. Like you can watch me go through this process. One, you'll learn about it, but two, I'm also like learning publicly, right? I'm going through the process of like, here's my thoughts. Here's how I'm kind of going about using this because it's brand new technology. Nobody has it figured out perfectly yet, but people might have prior experience in coding or development that like they're looking and seeing some of the things I'm doing and uh, they can provide feedback for how to do it better. I got that off my last video, people telling me how I can do different things better. Um, and that's hugely valuable. And it's a two way street, right? The value is both ways. But we're going to go ahead and pause the video. All right, so skip fast forward a little bit because I went and I got an error again. Um, that one was pretty quick. And gave an error. So apparently the two systems, again, takes a couple rounds. I think we're on like seven or eight now as you can see it's a 40 minute video this is one part of the process there is uh, running the code to generate the quote and then there's a couple steps after that as well so um, as you can see like this is a time consuming process but think about how much longer this would take you if you didn't have or how expensive it would be to get a developer to do this for you if you didn't have ai Oh, a miracle. Got it in one go. All right. Publish. Come on. I want to see that green checkbox. It tells us we did it successfully. And pause. All right. So I did get new feedback this time. It's telling us instead of a then, or using a then in catch, seven await and sync. This code is like, or this video is like 90% of me just like going back and doing the same thing over and over again. But, you know, you can fast forward through these parts and then by the end of it, it might be a three hour video, but uh, we'll get there. Just kidding. I don't, I might do a part two um, to fetch the line items and make the associations for that. But just started, started off creating a quote. Um, all right. I don't know why I started the video again. Uh, it hasn't gone through yet, but it should any second. Yeah, so I'm gonna pause this until the error or the success message shows up. And would you look at that? We are 40 minutes in, almost 41 minutes in this video, we get our first success. So it takes some time, right? And this might not even done what we needed it to do. Like just because it says it's a success, you also have to go validate that and go into the CRM and make sure that it generated the quote, but we'll look and see. Um, and it's gonna be green check marks all the way down. And if we go into our Should have a new quote here after we refresh. Let's 
Yeah, so we don't have a quote generated. Do one more refresh. So it's good, we got a success message, but it didn't actually do what we needed it to do. We just create the quote. Yeah, so what we're gonna do is, all right. Yay, we received our first test that didn't air on this step. However, it didn't, and it actually, hold on, before I say that it didn't, it actually very well might have. And it did. So we have the quote. The quote was created. Um, but now you get to the next step of this process, which is, okay, we ran the code to generate the quote. Next, we need to run the code to make an association with the quote and the deal. Uh, and then we need to run code to fetch an array of line items and then run code to associate the line items to the quote. So this is just step one of the process, right? One of the things I was trying to do when I first started building this process was I was trying to do everything in one action. And what I figured out was it's way too much to do in one action. So we start with the first action, which is generating the quote. After you generate the quote, that's kind of the biggest hurdle to get over. Then you can go through and you can actually make the associations with the deal um, and make the associations with all the other things as well, which is primarily going to be your line items. So. I'm gonna do that in a part two video because that's probably gonna be like 30 to 45 minutes of troubleshooting uh, in and of itself. But this laid the foundation for that. We've put together the video um, that built the first half and now we'll do a part two that builds the second half if you guys find this valuable. Um, and yeah, please let me know your thoughts, uh, questions, comments, concerns. I appreciate anybody who's made it this far um, and, I, and any insights that you can give me into how I can improve my process. And then hopefully this gave you some insights and some, uh, inspiration into how you can build your own processes. And maybe even in the meantime, between now and when I have the opportunity to put together a video for the next steps, you can work on, uh, work on this process yourself. And maybe with chat GPT and Zapier and a lot of trial and error, you could uh, make the association with the deal and um, fetch the line items and make the associations to the line items as well. So definitely going to be doing a part two soon. Hope you guys found this valuable. Have a great one and I'll talk to you.